Hey everyone, this is I'm a Dr. Nada, and today we're going to be going through step by step the contents of my prior modding preservation video, which really covers showing how to convert a texture replacer mod into a pack file. So something that's a little bit more easily implemented. So the first thing we need to do is to download the mod that I put up on Nexus Mods that essentially provides the necessary folder structure to be able to create a pack file. So let's download that right here. I have it open on the window and we just go to manual download and we download it. So easy. And then extract all. So we'll just have our actual folder, which will make it a little bit easier to work with. So what's going to happen now is that you have the mod folder in place here. Now, really, the, the key location that we need folder wise is going to be in the data folder. So let's just open it up here. And what we can see is that there's only a mods folder. And this is going to be where we ultimately want to place the files for the replacer mod that we're putting in. So next we need to move the mod files for the necessary replacer that we're, we'll have downloaded into this folder. So let's go through the whole process. I'm going to go to the younger Astarian mod. So I'm going to re-download the young Astarian mod because it has the files that we're, we want to put into place in the format that we need. So again, we'll just do the manual download here. In this case, you can choose which one that you want. I want to make it so it's very clear that we're seeing changes. So what we'll do is that we'll make it so he has red eyes, white brows, and white eyelashes. So just go to manual download. You can download, open the folder, right click, and extract all. So now you'll see that in this folder, we have a generated and public folder. So those folders are what we're going to be pasting into the template mod that I created. So what you can do is just select the two folders, do control X to cut them or just copy them. And then we'll go back to the other folder that I had for that template. So we'll go back into the data folder and then just paste them right there. Now, this is a place where you could then go into the mods folder and then change the, the meta.lsx file. You can edit some of the fields to represent your name. And we'll just cover how to edit the meta.lsx file so you can reference it. So what you can do is you can change the folder name. I just have it as mod name, but you could change it to the name of what you would want your mod to be for the tool for the mod manager and you can change the name uh, you would want to give it a unique UUID so to give it a unique UUID you need the modders multi-tool and you can get the modders multi-tool at the github page for the actual tool so in order to download it what you want to do is go to this releases tab just click on it and then you just download the zip file and save it and then you go through the same process of extracting it and then you can run the tool so once you download and extract it you should basically have a folder once you open it up that looks like this you probably won't have the unpacked mods folder because i've been using this tool for a while so i've unpacked mods but really all you need to do is just run it and to create that unique uuid you will just click this generate button right here while keeping the handle unticked and then click generate you can click on it and then you can go back to the text edit file and just paste it in. So this way there won't be any conflicts, which is more of a future proofing type thing. It's gonna, it'll save someone else time in the long term. And then you can just save it you can close it. And this will keep the Baldur's Gate 3 modder, modders multi-tool right now because we're going to use this again to finally put together our pack file. So we're, we were in the mod name folder. So I'm not going to rename the mod name folder because for these replacer mods, there's not necessarily data that needs that extra direction. But if you're manually editing files, you can let me know in a comment and I can 
produce another helper video to help clarify all this. So what we've done is we've gone, we now have all our files organized in this folder. So what we can do now is to make the pack file. So what I'll do is we're in this folder. I'm going to go back to the root folder. So we, we, we're back at where the key folder is this MPP template. Recall that if I click on it, it will go back to the data folder. So I'm gonna drag this folder directly onto this blue box into the modders multi-tool as you can see and then it'll take a little bit of time to package it it's going to create the zip file and then i'll extract that which is essentially going to put the new contents into what was previously that mpp template folder and you can see that we now have a data.pack file along with an info.json file but really all you need for publishing the mod is this data.pack file. And then you can rename it if you want. I'll just say, I'll just call it a Starian, for example, but the name there shouldn't really matter. It's It only matters to the extent that you wanna make it easier for people to know what is contained in the pack file. So now what we can do, now we're ready to import it into the game. So now I'm gonna open up Vortex and we're gonna import our mod to make sure that everything worked. So let's go to the mods tab for Baldur's Gate 3. And then to install our mod, what we do is we can click this install from file button on the top left, so click that. And then we're, we're gonna go to where we put our pack file, which in this case is in this downloads folder, go into the main folder, and then it's this file, asterion.pack. We'll click open, or you can double click on it. And then what, it, what Vortex essentially needs to do is put it into a zipped folder because that's just what it does. So you can click the create mod and it will automatically do that for you. And then it will also automatically install it so it can be deployed and you it will work in the game so if we scroll up we could, should be able to see now that we have our sterian.pack file in place so now that that's ready let's go ahead and launch the game so i'll just click it using the play sign in vortex just because it'll make sure that everything that we've loaded is indeed in place now that we're in the game, let's start a new game so we can test that our mod works. So we'll start a new game so we can look at our Astarian mod. What we'll go is we'll click on Astarian and you can see... So what you can see is that we created our Astarian model and we've created an abomination as you see. So he has these white eyebrows, he has the red eyes. So clearly what we created works. So. I hope that this was helpful. If you feel like there's anything more that I can clarify, let me know in the video comments and I'm happy to help you out however I can. I'm currently working on creating the custom materials content as well right now, which will pretty much show how to modify how your models interact with light in the game. And then after that, I'll have another poll that will include adding custom textures as well, which will affect how your models look, such as with colors. So if there's anything else that you think would be useful, let me know in a comment while liking and subscribing. The amount of traffic that I get for this modding related content is a little bit lower. So I will probably release another more general modding video before that next Baldur's Gate 3 tutorial. But you can always feel free to support me on my Patreon, which I kind of use as a signal towards how much I should space apart my modding tutorials compared to the more mainstream content. So thanks again for watching. As always, let me know if there's anything I could do to help and I'll get back to you when I have the time. Have a great day and Starship out.